Hello there everyone and welcome to this important video message update from me I'm calling it an urgent update because it truly is that important so we have a continuous wave wave after wave of cosmic energies entering our planet at this time and it is truly intense and I know because my body always tells me everything and because I have been translating such intense energies and channeling them into my body and it was truly truly a time of it's like very challenging time how to get this into the body into the state of embodiment and as you know i've been talking about this how to embody these waves and frequencies which is now becoming a, a job a daily job <laughs> for all of us who are here as a part of the mission team as volunteer souls but this time especially i've been feeling a very intense call from the spirit and even though i am currently on my retreat time in the retreat mode it was really like a, a calling to record this message anyway so spirit was like nudging me to do this because the intensity that i have felt was like ongoing you know usually it's like a wave that it's like it disperses a little and then again a wave but it's been happening gradually for about a week and last week all the way until the the pivot point which was around the time of my birthday like this was this weekend 15th 16th and it was just so intense that for me personally this year my birthday really didn't feel like a personal celebration or holiday it was that intense that it was all about this collective process as well as some of my own personal things and cycles revealed but this was like so aligned with what's happening and the energy continuously building up that they were showing me it's going to continuously build until the equinox time which will be next weekend so uh, it was, was in alignment also with as you know they always do the chem trailing work around this time and it was just so so intense that I couldn't sleep for around a week I was just tossing and turning around in bed and at the same time I was trying to do all the work that I had to do before my birthday you know the things that were still not complete during the cycle and I just really at a certain point I didn't know what else to do so I received a very important message during my birthday and I actually went into my portal spot around the Twin Lakes and once I was walking around suddenly I get this message I remembered watching this video a while ago it was quite a while ago when I think it was an astrologer and they were talking about how on your birthday you're supposed to go on a nature walk somewhere where you get messages okay and I always do that every day but you know have this real strengthening of the message of what you're completing okay what is coming into awareness what is really important for you as in what you're here to embody at this time what's most crucial and all of a sudden I get this message I come to our usual spot where there's a beautiful bench okay and I say we're gonna meditate here and the moment I come there this was right after I got this message which was probably from my <laughs> life family and I'm saying okay I'm open to this and the funny thing is just before we found like a, a piece of uh, uh, it's like a chemical medicines on the on the floor someone must have dropped it okay it was like a, a anti-pain medicine something like that okay <laughs> medicine and then it was like okay whatever that is and I come to the bench I hear this sound like this buzzing sound and I was like what is this and I went towards the water and I see the swirling of these um, insects I didn't know what they are and they were moving so fast and dancing and I've never seen so many at one spot like oh this must be a part of my message I was all like excited like a little child right I'm going there and I was like what are what are they okay just a little closer a little closer and then suddenly I'm like ow I got stung by one and they were actually wasps and it was so fantastic because all the summer I kept seeing their houses and the way they were building them and it's like I never saw so many as this year they must have been my messengers okay throughout this year and they mean so many things and they're not always like a vicious symbol okay in terms of what they represent because wasps um, unlike bees who are all about the selfless service you know and even when the bee stings you they die okay they kind of like sacrifice themselves for a greater good of protection but with wasps it's different okay the way they release their poison and it's like much more painful you know it's like in pain all day it was like on my birthday it's like what is this okay was that funny 
it wasn't funny on the other hand, but I've seen it like from the bigger picture. And the thing is, um, how I knew it was a message and how it was a part of the bigger message. So wasps, in a way, they represent that, you know, they go always like when there's a harvest season, there's like the most of them, okay? Around the harvest season, there's all these nectars from the fruits and they always go towards the sweetness and they smell something fruity and yummy, they're gonna go there and you're like, oh, get away wasps, okay? <laughs> and the thing is, they were, they were letting me know so many things. One is the sweetness of life, okay? And they were building house all summer. So they were actually showing me that I'm also building towards something. But then again, they had this ritual because I've never seen it before. They was like all went out to play and they were dancing. They were swirling and twirling around. I didn't know what they were doing, but I was so curious. I wanted to see. And I was basically their intruder. <laughs> and one of them like stung me because they were protecting their sacred space. And then we said to meditate and the message is starting to pour through. And the first message was the protection of the sacred space. Okay, that's the first message I'm going to share with you today. And then I'm going to move on to how this relates to the cosmic energy flow. So this ha starts to happen and the energies are coming in and they're showing me that this is finally something I'm ready to master because I've been in this old cycle for so long when I had so much infiltration into my sacred space, even physically, even people just showing up here, you know, it's like even online. Uh, one example was, okay, I'm going to give you one example. So someone sent me a birthday present and it's someone I blocked before because they were really not respectful of what I asked them, like not to send me this. Okay. I don't want to receive these messages and pictures and it's like I'm not about this I, I don't have time for this and it's not of my interest it's too superficial and they didn't respect me so every time they were there they kept sending me things and I said I don't like to block people at all I don't like that but sometimes I have no other choice because people will not respect my desire they will not respect my own personal choice to live the way I want to as my sovereign so during the course of my birthday I give myself only one desire only one intention and it was to truly be the authentic me, not as others want to see me or sometimes do, you know, project in seeing me and what they want from me or what they want to receive from me or what they think they want or need to send me, which is basically not what I maybe desire or need in my life because it's just their choice and it's their projection sometimes. So I just wanted to be fully real, raw and authentic me, Aurea, Dawn embodied in human form. So this was my only intention. So they were showing me that it's really important to protect your sacred space without feeling guilt because I often still felt, I felt guilt and shame when I did something like that. If I blocked someone, even after I asked them specifically, please, you know, don't do that. I didn't they respect it. They still continue doing that. And why does this happen in the first place? It's not a part of the unity consciousness because if someone asked you something and they are a sovereign individual and you don't respect their desires, you're not valuing them as a sovereign. So you're thinking you know what's best for them and you continuously do what you feel you're enjoying, you know, while, while you're sharing something with them and maybe they're not enjoying the same thing. Sometimes people will send you readings and cards when you, you never asked for it. You don't ask for guidance. You don't ask for people to mingle with your energy and they're continuously doing that. It's the same thing. Don't do that because you're not asked, you're not invited. And especially when someone tells you they don't want that and you continuously doing it. Sometimes it's also, you know, I had this idea because I received this present from someone. It was all these different items, right? First of all, people will always say, oh, what a nice gesture, right? Okay, yes. Okay, on the outside, it's a nice gesture. But I went really deeper into it through the spirit. And I was asking, what does this show me about me? What I need to see? Not what people might say in general. This is a nice gesture. Oh, you, at least you received this. Okay, I went deeper. And the first thought was like, you know, when we were younger, we had these birthday parties with kids we liked, okay? And then we came and we bought ourselves these presents, pencils, games, things, notebooks, you know, things like, oh, we were like gathering lots of stuff when we were kids. Now, when we're sovereign adults, we're, our lives are not about people buying you things like, this is this item, that item, you know, it's like people you don't even know. It's people they know you from the online stream world. They, pe these people don't know what you need. And it seems like it might be a nice gesture, but the wasps were showing me even that which seemingly seems so sometimes it's not going to have the effect that you as a master soul are, are wanting to establish in this life. Because a lot of times these tiny things people want to contribute as a part of our space is they're actually leaving imprints of theirs in your space because they want to be a part of your space. So if you don't let them be otherwise, they're going to try to infiltrate other ways, like seemingly politely or nicely sending you things. And it's basically things you don't need. 
because okay when i look at these things it's like okay it's a nice energy you might receive but then again what do you do with all this crap i'm sorry i don't want to say it like that but sometimes things that in the moment it feels like a nice gesture eventually it's like just more stuff you're gathering and it's like your energetic space becomes like this waste bag okay of things you don't really need and that someone else thought this would be nice for this person but you had no sovereign choice in it so in the old template this might have felt nice people are bringing you stuff and gifts okay um and if it's just like material things like certain boxes and things to put other things into and pieces of clothing that you as a sovereign you get to choose yourself on your own no one chooses these things for me by the way no one chooses personal items for me in my life and when people do that and even when you ask them, please don't do that anymore. And they still do it. And you might say, oh, it's a nice gesture. That's okay. I'm going to be nice to that person because you feel it's polite to do so. But spirit is telling me, no, that person, first of all, did not respect you. You're gathering things you don't need in your space. You're clogging up your space. Plus you're inviting an energy that you refuse to have in your space in the first place. How that relates to today's topic is that to defend our personal sacred space. And I had to get a wasp sting to get this message across for myself and for our, ourselves as the group, is that, you know, as painful as it might have been in that moment, it gave me such a profound message. I actually thanked it. I said, oh, thank you, finally. You know, it's like really, it's important. And because we find those um, uh, medicinal things before, I knew it was a medicine. The wasp was a medicine, which means it had a deep healing it was just a message, but the energy it brought, it felt like a final release that I can do that with clarity and without feeling guilty. And people will think that they're doing good things because it's what they want. But they never even ask you, do you want me? Can I send you something? Can I send you this as a first day? You know, with our sovereignty and our mastery, we have to learn to ask. Someone also sent me a song. They mixed my my song with songs of the beloved with someone else's singing something and they mixed it together and they sent it me as a per present. And I said, I know, again, you, you might feel that's a nice gesture, but at a deeper level, my song is a sovereign essence. It does need to not to be compiled with other things and stuff. And as a master of sovereignty, you might come across as harsh to other people as, as an initial response because they're not used to it. And everybody's programmed to be, to behave. If you get a present, you know, it's like old dogmas imprinted in our human structure. It's like behave well if you get a present you have to wear it right because someone bought it for you why why do i have to wear something i don't even like in the first place just to have a nice gesture because i ask people don't send me things okay i don't need more stuff in my space i already have a tiny space enough okay and these are not the things i've chosen myself so a lot of times people perceive at the physical personality level they want to do something good for you or make you happy but basically they want to make themselves feel good and happy because they're contributing the way they think they, you need, but it's not like how you truly need, because in the first place they didn't ask. So it's not a role to keep up the Joneses, up, right with up with the Joneses, or what's the phrase in English? It's our role to be, govern, um, to be governing, to be uh, patrons of ourselves in the way we support ourselves by saying no and yes in the right way. What's truly the meaning of preserving our sacred space, because then again, it will weaken our energy because a lot of times what the energies behind these people, and sometimes in many cases, they're also energetic vampires, they will send you things through which they will kind of infiltrate into your reality because they, they can't be physically a part of it. So they're sending these items as they want to. It's like you place them in your surroundings and, you know, not everyone has to deal with this. But imagine me being like publicly exposed like this. I have to deal with this. And it was a part of my mastery. And I had to like... Uh, <laughs> You know, I had to really sharpen the edges of this and I had to get really clear with myself. Where am I still playing this role of a nice person saying thank you to everyone? It's like, even if I don't really mean it, sometimes I don't mean thank you. Sometimes I mean, what the heck? I asked you not to. Why are you still doing this? Because people don't know. They're like on robotic programs that they think they're playing out the love and light aspect. But you know, a lot of these people, they are playing with the light. And I say, if you're only playing with the light and your shadow has never been integrated, which means obviously you've never gone within yourself and really clearly thought about yourself, what you're really doing behind those masks of, oh, you know, um, I'm being polite and I'm being so kind. I'm sorry using British accent right now. It just came up. I can't help it. It's not really good, you know, because I'm obviously not British, but being playful, okay? Um, things are coming up the way they are so i'm really presenting this in my own experience as a 
predecessor into our topic, like a, a prerequisite of what we're going to talk about, because it's that important first to keep your space pure, to be it's like so sovereign that it's like you get to choose everything, not someone else, even if it's through a nice, seemingly nice gesture. And this was the message, you know, even though I was nicely tuning, I didn't harm the wasps. I was still the observer they did not want there because their ceremony, they were obviously in a part of a ritual. It was so sacred to them. They didn't want any viewers there. Sometimes, you know, people are peeking into a reality. I have like a, a few stalkers here in the village. They just come here and look at what I'm doing. It's like, heck no. And I had to say no to a few of them as well in the physical life. Sometimes I do it through silence. Sometimes I do it in other ways. It's how I'm guided. But I have been really mastering this all these years because people don't understand that light and shadow need to be mastered within you. That you clearly need to know why you're even doing the things you're doing. Especially when you're dealing so much with other people that why are you infiltrating in their space anyway in the first place instead of creating your own? And allowing this to ask first before you do anything because clearly we're not teenagers okay we're and at least in that case you invited someone to the birthday party they came in they brought you a gift in this case someone just sent you in the mail it's like you didn't it's like a person you never even met okay so um the thing with, with this is it's so important because we are in need to not just energetically but physically built a strong house of spirit for us all of this work has been synthesized in my last mastery course which is the art of illumined creation and the elohim consciousness embodiment which is like this sovereign dimension of illumined creation which you can get on my page but um how does this relate to today's topic of these new waves of energy coming through and streaming through so intensely is that first of all okay um I have learned myself that when I don't anchor these energies right away, and I don't mean like a little later when I have time, okay? When this is your job, if you're doing any kind of pillar work as a pillar of light, not necessarily a creation pillar like me, but everyone who has this within their mission and it's written in their code to anchor these energies, they're doing a pillar kind of work. So this means you have chosen this task and assignment which is offered to you because your energy has the ability to handle it. This means that in this physical realm, you're going to have to learn how to handle these energies. And what I have received during my birthday, the message, was that I have to stop now dealing so much with this frustration of what people are doing and sending me and what they think of me and what they want to project at me. And it was like building up until the point of almost like it was a boiling point and the wasp was just like a tip of the iceberg, okay? And at that day, everything that revealed itself. And I said, I no longer will lose energy because of that, because it's no longer my focus. So that day, this intense energy wave came in. And because of all this being exhausted with all the people's stuff and, you know, all this I had to deal with and all I had to become aware of, which was in a way necessary. But I realized at a certain point, you have to let it go and you have to master it already once and for all. Shed the past, grow into this, grow into the new you. It's time. It's like this new assignment requires this of you, this new level of embodiment so you can hold these higher energies and frequencies instead of just feeding people's ego and being their wannabe person or just someone to go to because they're somehow worshiping or thinking that's the next best thing. It's not. I'm not here for that, okay? Um, and it was like this message that was like, if you are so much dealing with that, you won't have the energy that's required to do this work. So the funny thing was we, we did, um, sometimes we do this coffee reading and we had these two bowls in mind. I, I recognize it in an instant. I, it's like, I just turn it over and it was Quan Yin and she was riding her dragon. And next to that was like a little serpent. And like right across the serpent was like a group of people, all the intertwined, min mingling energies, whatever. And it was such a clear message. Quan Yin learning to tame her spiritual dragon, which is the spiritual sacred fire, the spiritual energy, this heat, these intense heat waves that I'm always working with and receiving as during those um, uh, anchoring moments when these energies are just flowing through. And it was the message you have to learn to tame this, uh, channeling these energies to tame this uh, <laughs> dragon of feeling fire. Because when you don't anchor these energies, because you're dealing with other stuff all the time, and these energies will be damaging to you and they will also create creations that will be more like damaging um, in a way destructive okay instead of create creative and productive 
because if these energies are not channeled properly they can come out as anger and intense frustration they're so intense and i've experienced that exactly on my first day because the cycle was wanting to complete itself you know birthdays are initiations when a 360 degree cycle plus five days what is that anyway you know it's like a gregorian calendar you know it's like a whole circling it completes itself and it's like you're finally there standing at the threshold whether you will step into this new whether you will move into another part of the deeper circle or you play out another you know you're gonna have to walk through again or you're gonna go deeper in and do a different circle now that's what birthdays are they're not like for you to get congratulated by thousand people <laughs> i don't want that either so um the thing was that i've experienced this intensity and it came out it almost felt like anger and at that day, I just saw this channel message from a woman who did a reading about the purpose. And it was exactly that. She was saying, you're channeling all these energies. They're so intense. But if you don't like learn how to temper them in a way, they come out as anger and frustration and so intense. And you never saw this part of me when these energies come through. They're so raw in the way they come through and I have to handle it. I sometimes can get like, whoa, you know, like Thor or something. And it's like... My mother has seen this face of mine and she goes like, whoa, you know, and, and it's scary sometimes. If I don't do the work, that's what it comes out. So Spirit has been sharing with me that my next level of mastery will be then. I have embraced these energies. I have embraced these roots of the Elohim consciousness and the descent. And because I can do this work, which means I'm going to be handled <laughs> different uh, higher energies, which means I get more. Uh, you know those of us who can handle what we get more that's how this uh, mission works this means you have to master the proper way of aligning and um, it's like how to filter these energies through your body you know how to be the vessel is is not something simple as just opening up and being and breathing no 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 it's like so much mastery work in this uh, and i have this uh, audiobook it's a mini audiobook called the uh, mission the cosmic mission uh, volunteer souls and it's about these stages you have to go through in this intense training so this training has been ongoing in many of the otherworldly realms but then here on earth it's like you have to walk through it all over again and master these levels so at first level you have to unburden from all that is truly not you and all the demands and needs and wants and it's like oh sometimes this takes you to this like i said the boiling point and for me the tip of the iceberg was the wasp stinging me and right in the, under the the butt in the thigh I was like, okay, in the butt, okay, I get it, almost, almost in the butt. And the thing was that afterwards, when this message from the Kuan Yin and it's like taming her spiritual dragon, it's like you have to, when you work with these energies, you have to use all the life force you have in your knowledge center. But then how to get it into, into physical, practical embodiment so the energies don't flow through in a destructive way, but constructive way. So they have shown me this will be my next level of master work, which will be, again, it's my inner time. It's my inner work I do behind the scenes. And a lot of times, well, people want me to do certain things and they're not maybe in my next ring of fire or the next circle, which I've now stepped into. So each time you go deeper in towards the middle placement of who you truly are each time you go deeper into the essence or if you don't complete it you will have to walk the whole circle again it's how it is people call this karma people call this reincarnation even during your whole lifetime you have many reincarnations within one cycle whether you repeat it or you move into the next level it's just how it is so they've shown me i have to move on to this next level in case of increasing my service work and now i'm going to get to the part of the message which is for all of us now as in the mission we're doing and the importance of this playing out in gaia's um, ascension and everything that's happening now and they have told me this is so urgent in a way this is so important because the more people that open themselves up to the importance of this work the better the outcomes will be for the whole so we're actually building up the template together we're holding the energy centers together which means that when you know how to defend your sacred space, all the messages recently have been about this. When you know how to keep it pure, to hold the energy high enough, then when you're going to start to work with these higher energies, when you are um, at a certain level, you will get what is appropriate for you to work with. You're never going to get what you can't handle. That's why I get really sometimes a little rough because I can't handle that. I just need to devote to it. And when I'm frustrated with other things, then my energy is like a little scattered. Then I can do it. Then I get bombarded with this and I overheat 
and my body feels like it's on fire and I, I feel like I'm dead. Like I want to die. It's that bad in the body, okay? It's that intense. It's like, I just want to die. It's so hot. I can't take it because I haven't done the work and I'm going to get to this stage to explain how to do this work properly. Okay, so Spirit has never asked me to ask you to share this message before. But this is so important now because the times are like, they're again, even collectively are moving to the boiling point. So if you have any way of sharing with your friends or someone you think it's um, in relation to this or they could understand and it's like sometimes people don't know how to support my work, you can also support it by sharing. Sometimes also sharing in the way that you're uh, clicking on my blogs. Um, in the video, sometimes people click on ads. I don't know if that works or not, but sometimes people say it helps to support. People don't always know how to support financially um, so that they keep the energy flowing. So you can also do support like this and share the video. So Spirit has asked me to ask you to consider the sharing, especially for what I'm going to share right now at this point. So after this pivotal point and the energy, I've been shown that each time the wave comes in and you will know it, you will feel it in your body. How I feel is like I get flushed. Okay, it's such a strong flush. It's like I overheat. It's so intense. It feels like someone smacks me over the head and I'm like, oh, I can't do anything. Even if I would want to move and create the flow in that moment, in that moment, I can't because it's physically so intense. When that wave hits and I don't like to use the words being bombarded with energy or hit with energy because it makes it sound like the energy wants to harm us in any way it's not like that the thing is that as humans our bodies are used to a linear way of functioning okay and we are still adapting to a multi-dimensional way of being which is like one state of adapting to it to the other it's not like instant okay it's not like oh instant click so what we are doing in this process is imagine these cosmic waves of energies they're like swirls and swirls and they're unfiltered they're kind of like um scattered and because of that when they start uh, coming um, into the stratosphere into the atmosphere and the, the planet and into your or own auric atmosphere to call like that into your own personal space and they're going to migrate towards you if you're it's almost like in your encoded blueprint you have this wiring to do this mission and that's why you will have some people say they don't feel anything because they're not wired for this mission and when you are these energies will almost like you're an antenna your energy is drawing them in it's like asking them to come it's like come come okay even when you're doing something like most mundane and you're dealing with other stuff the energies don't have that filter to say oh this person's busy oh gotta bypass it doesn't work like that so the energies are going to come in because your whole energy signature this magnetic nature of, of you attracting this will kind of invite this electric flow to come in and these energies are totally scattered they're like if you think of the nature of the cosmos it's like a whirlwind of okay so when they feel like they hit okay your body again it's a non-harming way it feels like you're flushed it's like a wave of energy hits you in that way and that's why it feels so intense so in that moment when you don't do the anchoring work right away it's not going to be good for you and when a certain um, amount of energy is just pulling through and you're not doing the anchoring work consciously it will create this flow of restriction when the energy will start to be experienced like it's pent up energy and the more energy you can harness again it's the more you can receive the more you will um, actually receive the more intense it will be so sometimes with beings like me as creation pillars we're going to be like oh you know, it's like Thor energy. It's like the lightning and thunder energy. And if it's not channeled properly, we're going to get upset. And we're going to get, uh, it's almost like this deep angst. It's like you start to shake. Your whole body shakes intensely. And when this happens, first, you got to do the conscious pillar alignment work. Breath work. So because what we're doing here is we're intentionally guiding these energies. We're totally scattered. Okay. It's like from the multidimensional stream, we're going to pull them into our bodies and we got to us, we have to give them direction. And then we intentionally guide them through our life force mastery. If you haven't done even that step, but you know, these energies are coming through you and sometimes it's intense for you. I really strongly advise you to do the life force mastery or the so-called tantrica um, mastery workshop, which is all about this. It's almost like six and a half hours or something long course, which is all about this training for your body. Okay. And then I've developed the cosmic dance for the galactic human and the sacred orgasm videos, which also help you how to work with these energies at a deeply tantric root level. 
So during this process, we're guiding these energies, which are totally multi, you know, from multi streams and facets of light, and they, you know, come here. And our bodies are not used to this stream, okay, of energy. It is still intense for our bodies, as well as our spirits are adjusted or adapted. Our bodies are sometimes having difficulties with this. So we have to do this work intentionally. So when we're guiding the energies, the next step then is to root them. <laughs> and the rooting process, imagining the roots and the roots and going deep into the earth and the ground and you becoming the embodiment of the one who's like a tree. You have these roots. Then you can really, really harness these energies. And then when you do this first initial, initial work, then you're going to move on into creating flow because you have at least open up your body Okay, again, to a new level. Because sometimes, like I said, when you're totally flushed, you can't physically do anything. That's how it feels. It is not like you're just a little tired. Or it's like, it's not like when you had a long run or a hike. It's like you're physically tired. You can still do things. When it's this energetic burnout, it's like 100,000 times more intense. At least from my perspective, because I get to experience it, okay? So some of you who have this mission work, you might wonder why you're feeling more intensely. It's not just because you're more empathic. It's because you have an agreement and your energy body is pulling in these energies because it's for the greater collective good and you're part of this process. But when you focus on other things or your life is too focused on trivial things and matters or you're dealing with things that you're not supposed to be dealing with in the first place, then your energy will get ungrounded and scattered. So when these energy flushy waves come in, you're going to be like, whoa, you know, like flushed. <laughs> So this is the first step to consciously guide them into this mainstream template of our human body as it is now. So they can do their work. And when you root them, they're going to start to rewrite the new template also at the level of Gaia and the planetary work. So if that's our mission, we have to do the work. There's no excuses or procrastination about this anymore. That's what Spirit is telling me. And they're showing me that's why this is so important now. And with this strong buildup and intensity, um, they're saying up until the equinox point is just going to continuously build up and it's for people who still don't get it that they need to do this work it's going to just get more and more challenging and it was for me this way and I know why everything the messages at all related and got me to a next part of the circle a tighter part of the circle which is basically more true and more authentic in the nature of my true purpose and who I am not what people want me to be okay so um, let's say you're dealing with so many other things in the physical, right? What this causes is it's almost like you're energetically busy because you give all of these objects. We use the example of objects you don't really need or communications you don't need, like telling people all over again, like da 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 da. Are you here to over explain things? No. So you're using so much of, of, of your energy up. So basically you can't show up for the work you're really here to do. And this is a part of the mission team for the volunteer souls and why we're here to do. And me as a, sometimes as a queen bee in the middle of this circle that I get to have this experience as a pillar of creation and then to teach this to those who have this wisdom within themselves, who have this imprint within their uh, template, okay, in their star seed template. So what that is then important when you create this intentional guiding of the energies is then you create a flow. And you do that flow with uh, everything I've shared in the courses, sacred dance, um, it's like a free flow dance, but it's not just the same as what people call the free flow dance. This is a life force dance because it harnesses life force energy as a part of that process. It comes together with accompanying cultivation and it's a part of the tantric yoga path as well. It's not just like you come and show it, do some random moves and dances. It's different. You use light language of the body in so it's a mixture of knowing what you're doing and again unplugging from the controlling process of how you're moving your body so again if you want to know more it's all in the course and the cosmic dance course is really super cheap the cosmic orgasm is a little more because it's more advanced level for people who will know how to work with that it's like it's not for everyone yet because you have to really have such deep reverence and respect for this process again it can cause a lot of um destruction if you're not using this properly this high energy has to be used with great awareness humility for the process and again understanding that's cosmic plus practically embodied on earth so um yes this will be the last um, part and when you do that when i do that when i combine these methods and when i do the dancing it's like instantly feeling of great i will feel tired afterwards perhaps but it will be again the physical kind of being tired not anymore that flushed energetically when you just want to hit the wall and <laughs> die <laughs> okay a little joking here but um to put that aside um i want to also now 
offer like a little decree, a little um, intentional light activation, just like to get you to see what's important as a part of this process, okay? So if you want to stay with me a while longer, this is now fully um, what Spirit has been showing me today. And if you are ready, you can do now this exercise of light together with me. Okay, so just sit. What is important for you is to sit in your center. Always be the zero point, the merger of all polarities of timeline. So when you're sitting, feel yourself. You're sitting in your vertical column of light. You have also the horizontal alignment is building that what you can call the galactic cross, the cosmic cross, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, it's the vertical horizontal is one. Then you, through that center, which is within you, you also feel the, the um, it's almost like the interjecting of all the different timelines. They don't just go from back to forth, left from right, diagonally. They move in all streams and all directions and they all intersect within your core, your center. And when you feel that core, your center, and each time you have to tune into it anew, it's not an automatic or robotic process. You have to organically tune into that core each time you do the work. So the primary guidance here is the moment you feel that wave hitting you, <laughs> flushing you, <laughs> do that instantly. It will only take a few moments. But what you will do, not just for yourself, but for the benefit of the planet, you will do multiplied in waves. And you will call in the waves of other people who maybe are not engaging with it consciously because our energies always activate the energies of others. So people will be inspired by that. So that's why Spirit guided me to ask you to share this video in any way possible if you can, because it's that important of a topic. And especially now, because we're moving towards this boiling point at a certain degree of how much light quotient we've already achieved on the planet, but we're getting really close to something. That's why it's so intense. And like I said, last week, they've been doing the chemtrailing every day. They don't do it every day. They do it very often, yes. But last week was like every day and every day was like flush and I couldn't sleep. And it was like, it means we've built so much light quotient. It's starting to happen, but which also means we have to go more deeply into the body and respect this process and give it our fuller attention than before, which means forget the trivial things. People say, I want to connect with this person. I want to do that. I want to go there. I want to do this workshop. If you have the sacred vision, this is now more important than anything else. And you will know this because you're devoted to this process. If not, it just simply means you're not there yet. Okay, leave it for a while. <laughs> Maybe it comes back to you. Maybe this video finds you when you are ready. There is no time. But let us now do the exercise because it truly is the important, most important part of this transmission today. So you've now found, you've, you've located this inner core. This is your center or the zero point, your vortex, whatever. Now imagine these energies, cosmic energies. You can also imagine like a cosmic pulse of life, which is like streaming, like spinning. And through this galactic pulse of life now with this flush of energies, with this energetic wave and the cosmic rays, you're feeling like lightnings coming from all the directions and angles and they're like shooting up. <laughs> and you find that within your core now, you're in this deep alignment. You're sitting with the roots. You're deeply grounded. You have your vertical pillar and your horizontal pillar, and you are the intersecting point of all the different timelines, probabilities, possibilities, realities, realms, all of that, all potentialities. All they meet within your now, within your sacred core. When you are in this space, when you feel this space, when you feel these energies, instead of this being the unconscious process, with your breath, you're starting to consciously pull them through your vertical pillar of light. And when you do so, you feel them entering in a guided way, in a structured way. So you're getting, you're getting this untamed energy's structure. You're filtering them through your own consciousness, your sovereignty, your I am presence, your illumined core. And you're pulling them. It's like imagine you're pulling them. And as you're pulling the, them, they're already being softened. They're no longer as intense. They're not here to damage your body. They're not here to harm you or your cells, your DNA, your codes. They're here to simply be mastered through life force mastery. They're here to not be understood or analyzed. They're here to fulfill their meaning, their purpose, because they're being sent here for a reason. You are the antenna. You're the cosmic servant, the cosmic antenna. You're the vessel for this process. You're here as a part of the mission team to do this work 
And when you're doing this intentional pulling of the energies, imagine how they're softening and you feel like a spiraling energy of the divine life force or divine mother, Holy Spirit. You're feeling that spiral is helping you to ground these energies. So you can feel like that spiral moving around your vertical pillar of light or vertical column of ascension and it's moving. And with that building of the momentum, you're feeling how these energies are moving into the root. And when they're anchoring, you can feel yourself growing roots. They can be red in color. They can be red and white, which are the colors of the I am. I like to always visualize red plus white and gold. Okay. So you can go from this platinum, silver, white to this, you know, it's almost like electric energy. And then you feel like it's getting more and more deeply into the magnetism of your being and goes through the roots and enters the planetary core and it's getting stabilized. These energies are now getting a grounded sense of anchoring stability. And after a while you will feel they might like a resurgence of energy. They're starting to come back up and that which comes returned. Now you will use what is spirit showing me now is you will use it like it's coming up. And with the in-breath, you will gather it again in your core. And from the core with the out-breath, you will now push it into the all different streams of energy. So left and right, like your horizontal axis, masculine and feminine divine, you could also see it like that. And then it moves through all the multiple streams of light. You can just imagine like you're pulling, it's like stretching out. And as this happens, the energy now is no longer that intense. They're starting to get this rainbow like energy they're becoming all these different colors and textures and um, all of it but now it's structured and it's intentional it's no longer that oh you know the energies that are undefined they're now getting this definition in terms of they're knowing their purpose and they're knowing it through you you are this conscious pillar you're doing this work and this purpose is known through you and it starts to birth new forms of creativity that is why these rays are here but they will act more destructively than constructively if we are not doing our job or mission as pillars of light. That is why this energetic exercise is so important. And when you feel that and you're stretching them out and as you're doing this, you're just imagining like you're pulling off filaments from your core. Okay. What comes back through that thrust and you're harnessing it. So this means the energies are being filtered through the intentional guiding process and through the life force mastery. Then they're being anchored. You're doing that through the root work. And when they thrust back up, they're being harnessed. So these are three main stages of this work. Okay. So you're guiding these energies and you're gathering them, you're anchoring them, and then you're harnessing them for the greater good of the creative process, the creative artwork of this light work that is now being propelled here in this uh, multidimensional ascension timelines of the one. And when you're doing it through a core, you're grounded. You're not feeling that scattered flow with these energies that are still kind of undefined and wobbly and all that and shaky. And that's why we're shaking. We're feeling physically the, the, um, uh, as a sensation of shaking, being shaken up because they're kind of wobbly. They're like this. And it feels like each time they hit, it's like our toroidal field is being like a little wobbled up. <laughs> so when we do this anchoring process, Again, intentional guiding through life force mastery, anchoring the energies, rooting them. And then through the harnessing process, you're using the creative potentiality to move the energy into endless streams of creative flow. You're contributing to the dynamic um, tension of creation. So instead of that pressure, it now becomes a dynamic tension, which will build new flow. And when you do that, create a sacred space for yourself. Even if it's just for a few minutes, it doesn't matter. It will instantly shift your energy. Don't do it to look better or you know to have a better figure or something do this intentional dancing uh, as a part of the galactivation process um, to work with these energies to work for the greater good of all that is your highest service of this time if you're a part of this group this message might not resonate for everyone because they're not feeling these energies as intensely but those of you who do you're definitely being called now to level up in this work because it's not just for you it is a part of what you sign up here uh, to do and you're not receiving what you can do. You're receiving that intensely because you already know how. Maybe you're just not yet devoting to it or you're not finding space because you're dealing with things that, again, like I said, we're not always meant to deal with in the first place and they're not our highest mission. And it's time to cut the cord with that and say, hey, this is my work. I have to realize this. And when you will do that, you will see because of you have harnessed the energies, they will somehow through your 
re reflect the reality through the mere concept that will come back into your life as pure abundance, as support, as maybe meeting people who are of that same wavelength or doing the similar work, um, not necessarily physically, but maybe online, people will come together and they will know and recognize each other for doing that work. Or even physically, you will somehow it's like reap the benefits of this work. So yeah, this is a part of that process. If you want to support my work, you can always do that um, the way you already know how to. There's always a PayPal link down below. It's a direct payment link, I think, if you want to support that way. I have an announcement to make about Patreon. Uh, I've currently created a goal because I've just this year started being more active. I, you know, I wasn't there yet with all the courses work I had to do. Uh, but now um, I've created this goal when I have a certain number of supporters. I'm going to start channeling because now I do monthly message. I will also add channeled Ascension monthly video message, but I don't want to do it if the group of people is too small. So go check that out. I created a goal. I think it's only 44 people. That's the goal. It's not a lot, basically, but if um, it's not based on money, it's more like on the number of people that get to be served because it will only come through that platform, the message. So that's my new intention now. And another update for those of you who've been always asking me about my book, about the mission and purpose of volunteer uh, souls, the mission and journey, sorry. Um, once again, after creating this uh, template of mastery courses and multidimensional courses and beloved courses now being complete, I've once again got the thumbs up, a green light from spirit. I was today, I've written this paragraph and it was just like for myself, but then I read through and I thought, wow, this is um, this alignment with the pioneering ascension um, uh, souls who are here as pioneers, okay, ascension pioneers, volunteer souls. And I knew, wow, this means it's now, it's now time again for me to start up with that. And a lot of it is already written. Um, it's just aspects now need to be kind of fulfilled in terms of coming together the right way in the right time. So um, those of you who have been always asking me and saying that you can't wait to read the book, the first one of the trilogy, I'm starting to work on it now again when the course is being complete. So you can also support that as a part of the Patreon team. You're doing... When you're on Patreon, basically you're supporting the work that's already here, freely shared on YouTube. You're supporting my book writing when it's coming in the near future. Um, you're supporting also that I get additional work done for you via Patreon. And each month you're getting the uh, message, spirit channel message and a grid layout for that month, how to work with the energies of the month for your highest good and also for the greater good of all. And each one that joins as a new member, um, as a new part of the support team, gets their own personal beloved um, illumined oracle as well, the first time you join in and support the work. So check that out, please. If you, we want to do more messages, I will come with more content after this short break. And I'm sorry, made it, I always made it sound like I'm on a break and then I do work and people are like, are you back? What's happening? And it's like, I can't control things. Sometimes I say I'm on a break and then I work instead. Sometimes I say I'm working and then I'm more on a break. And basically our work is, my work is I'm never on a break. Okay, to tell you honestly, I'm never on a break. If nothing else, these energies, I'm, I'm always mastering something new. And sometimes it's like, oh, does it ever end? Then the answer is always like, no, that's what you signed up for. <laughs> I, what I have, what I experience in my life is like tiny moments of feeling that release of everything but it's just like a glimpse of it and then I'm back on track okay back to work so it's basically a devotion that's steady and constant it doesn't end for me when I say to people I'm on a break and they think I'm like they're sipping cocktails somewhere I never do that I've never done that in my life ever okay so uh, I don't know if I ever will maybe not um, but the point here is that once you're a part of this work those of you who feel this calling it never ends, okay? Even when you're on a break, you, you're not on, on a break from these energies. It's like you're never fully on a break as for people who are not in tune with these higher cycles and what's happening here with the ascension reality. Uh, you're not a part of that. And that's why for you it's different. And it's always going to be. So the book about the mission and journey of volunteer souls will be almost like an initiation of the volunteer soul who is here to embrace themselves and their mission at the fullest level by knowing themselves how this mission is, how they work with the energies, how they work with imprints, basically how everything is organized and structured in this realm of being a volunteer soul. So, you know, sometimes you have moments of giving up and thinking, what this is all the heck about? Or am I here? Have I ever been here even before in human form like this? 
all these questions and when you're going to read through the book once it's complete it's going to help you to maintain this high level of awareness and vibration because this is our ultimate we have to always maintain this high level of vibration it will help you to it's kind of like always get back in your flow always get back on track because you know yourself and uh, you, you walk through each like initiation, something that's, it's almost like spirit speaking to you, through you, um, through me, through all of it, okay? All of it is a part of this how spirit speaks. And it's constantly inspiring you to never give up on this mission because it is so sacred and you've been writing it anyway. So that's going to be the first focus and the other two will come a bit later. So thank you for supporting, okay, guys. And those of you who want to support in a monetary way, now the direct PayPal me link is down below. I've recently created it. I don't know. I'm still new at all this. I don't know the difference basically, but um, okay. Some people prefer it this way. Um, anyway, thank you. And if you in any way are inclined to share this video with people who you feel are somehow doing this work, maybe just they need more understanding into this, let them know, share this with love. As always, love is sharing and we are here to share with love even when we're supposedly on a break. <laughs> I love you guys. Take care with so much love, wisdom, and power as always from my sacred space to yours. And do the work. <laughs> Just kidding. Enjoy. Bye.